Hey guys, this is John Cornell and welcome to the March 2022 Dev Drop. I'm super excited to be back. I'm actually recording this from within my office here within Genesis Cloud. Haven't seen this office in two years, so it's exciting times. I hope everybody is safe and healthy in these challenging times. So today's Dev Drop is going to kind of be interesting. We're not going to be walking through a lot of code, but we're going to talk about how to set up and configure a data action that can invoke an AWS Lambda running within your own uh, AWS account. For those of you that are new to Genesis Cloud, data actions are a mechanism in which you can integrate into your architect flow or a script, your third-party web service, like a REST-based web service, um, or an invocation to an AWS Lambda. And so today we're gonna to specifically talk about setting up Lambdas. We have plenty of examples of how to set up REST-based services, but we really never have talked about how to set up an AWS Lambda. And personally, that's one of my favorite ways to integrate if you have AWS available to you. So I'm gonna take a typical scenario. Uh, we're gonna walk through the configuration needed to be done in your AWS account, which is actually pretty minimal. And then the configuration that you need to do inside of Genesis Cloud. We're gonna take a fairly common scenario as an example picture here that you have in front of you. And that is of an individual interacting with your website through a web messaging deployment. That web messaging deployment is basically calling out to a web messaging flow, who's talking to a bot flow, who then is, uh, you know, and between those two flows are calling out to a data action that's calling a Lambda running in AWS to retrieve some information. To set this up, we need to set up what's called a trusted role within AWS for your Lambda. And a trusted role is really nothing more than an IAM role that defines how two different AWS accounts can interact with each other. And in this case, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a trusted role to define how you can let Genesis Cloud invoke a Lambda running within your account. Now we're not gonna go through like actual Lambda code. We're not gonna walk through like what your Lambda IAM role has to be, even though it's on the picture here, because that's really very specific to you, right? That's defining how your Lambda can interact within your environment. However, we are gonna talk about that trusted role setup. And so let's go ahead and get started there first. All right, so we're gonna go out to uh, an AWS account that I have uh, here in Genesis Cloud that we use specifically for a lot of this work. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to look for a trusted account that I've set up uh, in this example. And it's called Dev Dude Order Status Trust Role. And just uh, and later on, we'll allude to this, but we actually have a blueprint where I actually uh, have in working code showing how to do this data action in Lambda and setting it all up in Terraform. But let's go look at the major pieces of this configuration so you can understand how this is done. All right, so basically we're setting up a standard IAM role and we have to define the permissions and the trust relationships in this role. In a trust role, you always have to define the trust relationships. A standard IAM role, you're only defining the permissions and the resources that it's allowed to access. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this dev dude order static trusted policy. And I'm gonna look at an IAM role that I've already created out here uh, for my trusted role. And I'm gonna look at this JSON fragment. And so there's a couple of interesting things here is basically this JSON fragment is saying, I'm going to allow the invocation of a Lambda or invocation of a Lambda. And that Lambda is gonna reside with this ARN. So basically, if you know your if you know AWS, an ARN is basically a way of uniquely identifying a resource based on the AWS region you're working in, the AWS account ID, and then the specific resource you're trying to get at. In this case, we're trying to go after a function residing, residing in my dev dude order status lambda. However, unlike a standard IAM role definition, you also have to define the trust relationship because we're trying to get two orgs that belong to two different entities to talk to each other. So let's go ahead and take a look at that part of the setup. Now to set up the trust relationship, you basically have to go out there and you have to define a fragment, um, an IAM policy fragment that has a couple of important pieces of information. And this is often where people get the most confused is first, you have to define the, the AWS account that is going to call the AWS Lambda in your function. In this case, it's Genesis Cloud. And so when you set up this policy fragment, you have to have a principal ARN 
that basically has the Genesis Cloud AWS account ID in the root to do the invocation. So when Genesis Cloud goes to reach out and call the AWS account ID, AWS, or excuse me, invoke the Lambda, the first thing that's gonna happen is AWS is gonna go, oh, do I have a trusted relationship with that specific account? The second thing that you need to set up, this is very important from a Genesis Cloud perspective to let Genesis Cloud know who you are, is you have to set up a condition with an external ID that basically has your Genesis Cloud organization ID in it. This is probably one of the most confusing things about setup. People invariably put either their own account ID here, or they forget to include the Genesis Cloud ID, or excuse me, their Genesis Cloud org ID, and that always trips them up. So that's the only thing you need to have set up to establish that trust relationship between um, the, the two different AWS accounts. Now you also need to basically have your Lambda defined. You need to have an IAM role defined on your Lambda that uh, will define what the Lambda can have, but um, we're not gonna get into that detail. That's really not what we need to worry about. Right now, the only thing we need to worry about is defining this trusted role and making sure that we have the IAM policy fragments correct that define the permissions and the trust or the policy uh, permissions and the trust relationship. So now let's go out here to Genesis Cloud. Now I've logged into my test Genesis Cloud org. And the number one thing that I need to look at is I'm gonna to go to my admin console. I'm gonna to go to integrations. And normally what I would do is I would set up a new integration and I come out here and set up an AWS uh, Lambda data action. But we don't need to do that. We've already got one set up out there. So let's look a little bit at this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out to my dev dudes order status Lambda integration. I've already defined this integration. And I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna look at my configuration because you're gonna give your, your uh, integration a uh, configuration. And what's really important here is the credentials. Now, when you set up an AWS data action Lambda, you're gonna to have to provide the uh, trusted role ARN for what you want to invoke. So in this particular case, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna grab this ARN right here. And I'm going to copy and paste that in there. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to save it. And then I'm gonna have an action. All right, because the integration is kind of the top level container. One integration could call multiple actions. Uh, so once we have that set up, establishing what the trust relationship is, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the actual action. And typically this would be in, in us basically going out here and saying add action. And then I would select the specific integration that I have set up. And in this case, I already have an action out there. So let's go ahead and set that up. And then from there, it's just a matter of going out and defining my contracts. So I've got my contracts defined and I've got an order request object. That's the input coming in and an order number uh, being passed in on that order request. And that's what my Lambda is expecting on getting in. Then I have a response object that has the fields that I'm expecting to get back from my Lambda. So once that's all set up, I can look at my configuration there is my um, request URL that I have set up. So this is gonna be my actual uh, URL that I wanna go after. And this is really important. You have to grab the URL that you've set up inside of your trusted role. So you, this is what's gonna be your account number. Again, this is one of the most common mistakes people make. They put the wrong account number in there. They don't know how it's properly formed. They have their authentication defined, which we defined on the credential. So let's go ahead and just enter an order number and see if our Lambda is going to be invoked properly. So I'm gonna run my action and everything, if it's, everything's green, I should get my order information back. If not, I'll usually, you'll get an error message back and it will usually be some kind of authentication error. Like I wasn't able to authenticate or it was a malformed request. Most common thing I see is um, authentication errors. Okay, so it seems super simple, pretty easy to go. Like I said, it really is once you get that AWS trust role to set up. 
Now, there's a couple of best practices I always like to tell people uh, to think about when they're doing lambdas. One, make sure that you keep your trusted role in your lambda to the right level of security. If you talk to anybody in InfoSec or CyberSec, it always comes down to access should be the least level of privilege. It's very, very tempting early on when you're trying to figure this stuff out to just give all permissions to all things, right? Really tighten down not only the trusted role, but also what your Lambda can do. Because by punching a hole into your AWS account via this trusted role and then your Lambda, if you just improperly set up your permissions and say, I'm gonna give you access to everything, um, you're basically opening the front door. So make sure that you really get the right level of security access and permissions. I always like to go out and list out each individual resource and the specific permissions that they need to ask. The second thing is you'll notice when we look at the AWS integrations, I have a very, very flat data structure here. Um, a lot of times, both for my input and my output objects. You know, a lot of people use the third party REST call, and that's great because sometimes you have REST services that are already out there. But where people have to deal with that, uh, a lot of heartache is oftentimes translating more complex nested REST interfaces. Uh, into uh, values that then can be consumed by the script and they got to get into velocity macros and all that stuff. Use the opportunity for a Lambda if you have a complex um, invocation of a service to flatten the interface. Make the interface in and out of the Lambda very, very simple. It really is a nice thing. Uh, you know, I tell people make your interfaces flat because it will make testing and debugging easier. The whole point of the Lambda is to make coding easier. Also, if you're looking at invoking a REST service that's pretty complex, I always encourage people to maybe consider if you have an AWS Lambda, wrap it in a Lambda. Lambdas are very easy to go and expose as an interface as you just saw here, but then it's much easier to write retry logic and resiliency logic and cache data inside of a Lambda call rather than trying to deal with all that stuff inside of an architect flow. All right, so always take a look at that. You know, use that Lambda to simplify integrations. If you find yourself pushing a lot of complexity into your flows and you have an AWS account where you could also do that, I just hope people make your life a little bit easier. Easier code means more stability and easier debugging. All right, I wanna end this uh, dev, drop, uh, dev drop with just a couple of resources that we have out here that might be interesting around data actions and Lambdas. First of all, you can always go out to help.mypure.cloud and just look up data action integrations or data action lambdas. And you can see our documentation on data actions and how to set up a lambda. It's pretty good. Like I said, even when I was learning, I had a few uh, spots where I got tripped up because I had IDs reversed and stuff like that. The second thing is I would really, if you guys are Terraform users or looking at CX's code, I would look at our github.com Genesis Cloud DevOps environment because if you're looking at setting up a CX's code Terraform pipeline with this, we already have a couple of remote modules sitting out in this uh, org, uh, GitHub org, that you can use. We have basically a remote module that will let you go out and set up um, the integration. And in the integration, we go up and we set up not only the integration and the credentials. And if you were trying to set this up in Terraform using our CX's code provider, you'd have to kind of figure all this stuff out on your own by either reverse engineering it, looking at parts of the documentation. Remote modules in Terraform and CX as code basically let you act like you're calling a function. And so we have some good examples out here in our github.com slash Genesis Cloud uh, DevOps uh, repo. We also have um, a data action Lambda module, a remote module that you can use. Believe it or not, uh, my team has used both of these modules like three or four times now as we build out example blueprints. So if anything, if you choose not to, and you want to manage all this stuff within Terraform uh, locally, you can at least pull these down as examples. But if you want to use them as remote modules are out there. The other thing I would do is I would encourage you guys to go out. We have a draft of a blueprint that we're working on. It's basically going through content review right now. So maybe all the spelling and grammar isn't correct. But we have an example of pretty much that web messaging chat bot that calls out to AWS. And if you go out here, you can actually see a working example where we have a Lambda that we're building and deploying to AWS, and we have Terraform and CX's code code that not only 
set up all of the AWS uh, Lambda information and the trusted role, but then also do all the Genesis Cloud work. So, all right, everybody, that's the end of this jab drop. Thanks everybody for joining me. I'm super excited to be back here. Uh, please post questions on the forums if you have them and uh, please give this a try. Thanks and everybody have a, uh, a great afternoon.